My name is Rick Strohmeyer. I'm a painter, graphic designer, printmaker, and toy designer. For the past 10 years, I've been customizing toys with one of my notable, with the notable su success of my use of neon colors. And I was asked today to share a couple methods that I use to make my toys pop like crazy. So we're going to discuss two methods today. One is the glazing method where we take a pre-existing value and then we lay over a nice even coat of neon color to give to make that surface is more interesting and then the other is a special effect to make parts of it glow you know uh, I have an aesthetic with with robots and cyborgs monsters that if I think that if I see a port a crack or a energy tube or eyes I want them to glow and, and show off that it has this extraordinary uh, point of life so with that being said we are used today on my example I'm using an Angelique made by designed by Abner Marin and produced by Blackheart models and here we go from Wow to Kapow. And thanks for jo thanks for joining us today. Sit, grab a drink, sit on back, put your feet up, and enjoy the show. I painted the face in advance, varnished it, and then I covered it in blue tack to protect it from overspray as I laid out the values in silver on all the armor and everything that's going to get glazed first. Every, the values were laid out with silver as the white and then blue as the dark and red as a mid-tone to make that make the orange layout richer. We have the model reassembled. I painted it in pieces and I've got it back together and I'm reestablishing where I want the highlights to be. Uh, I use the silver as the white for the under layer and I'm just putting in reestablishing all the values I can or just the highlights to make it pop as much as possible once the orange glaze is laid on there everything's going to be knocked back a, a, value, a value scale or two that's complete we're moving on to the orange I'm using Vallejo's or neon orange from their Mecca line it's a great paint it's um, it, it has it's meant to be painted on models with moving parts so it's got a, it's got more durability to it my paint is cut with some matte medium and flow improver too to add to, to some tr translucency to make sure that the silver comes out through through. I'm painting it in pieces here so that I can dry, paint a little bit of each part and as a, and for handling purposes so that I don't lay it on too thick, it's light, and then I can move on to another piece as one part's drying. It's trying to economize my motion and my time. So I'm just going to bounce back and forth. You can see how the, the blue and the red are interacting with that orange to where the red parts get a little richer and the blue or you mix orange and blue together it, it's going to create a darker value and so we're just I'm, I'm spraying from each piece underneath first to make sure I've got every nook and cranny uh, orange and then we're just going to start moving up on the these parts I would call the crown flange uh, they're not going to be totally orange because I'm going to make some interesting transitions with these and I'm going to knock a piece over and be grateful that the Vallejo uh, mech line is really durable paint so yeah just more and more values laid out and I'm not painting every piece of Angelique orange but uh, there's a lot that's going to be orange and then we'll cut in later on to with the paintbrush some parts to make it a more interesting piece but yeah just spraying in the uh, spring in over everywhere you can see the values changing and uh, 
this is the best part about a neon glaze is that uh, we're using the airbrush to make sure that it goes on smooth and flat and, uh, and because it is so such a transparent paint that we're able to, to get some cool textures underneath and let that show through and I'm reassembling it just to make, re again just like the silver making sure that my connection pieces have the same values and look like they belong there and we're just going to pop in some extra places make sure I didn't miss anything because this is uh, after after this orange there's no stopping it, it, it's going to be it would be very difficult to to fix anything if I, if I mess up this stage so we're just going over to be as careful and thorough as possible Just of making things interesting, we're going to make the orange the part of the crown flanges. We're adding some yellow to some of the spikes, on it. Uh, not all the way. It's uh, it's a transition to another step. It helps make it look more interesting. Just blending in these pieces. And from there, yellow to green. We're adding some green to the higher parts. The piece that I'm not holding on is going to be a different color altogether. So we're just, we're just adding in a little bit of green now. We're going to have a lot of green moving throughout the piece just to make things, make it look interesting and, and vibrant as hell. Big reveal with the blue tack off the face. Everything's assembled. Colors are starting to look great. And then, pow, on the black light, it's looking good. It's the colors that I wanted. And everything's smooth. Looks wonderful. Brush work, I painted some accent, pan accent panels, painted the cables, gave some light weathering to all the armor in select spots. I painted green base coats for future glow effects. Hand painted the back tubes. And despite all the weathering, the orange held up to a really nice effect. And we get to see how it all looks out in the black light again. It would be considered appreciating, or in college we called it under white, where you've, you're laying down a white value to just so that you can manipulate it with another color over top of it to make that next color brighter. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding in white on every part. I'm doing it on the extra spike that I painted blue in the studio. I'm adding it to the eyes over top of the green that I established upstairs and with the paintbrush. I'm adding it on cables. I'm adding it anywhere I'm going to put neon green to make it look bright. My design aesthetic, any cable that carries energy or port or eyes that show some type of energy or life force, I like to make them pop uh, and glow. So this is where we're, at. this is how we over exaggerate that with the neon colors and I'm fitting the crown flanges to make sure that I have that light bouncing off on the inside of it. And it's, it's all about just creating a, the illusion that, that we have light pouring out every hole uh, that I can and just reestablishing it on the flanges and going going to town and you can see that now that I've added the bit from the base to the under white to the neon glow there that now it's taking on a, a different life and it's got energy going everywhere I love it You can see my this 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 is sped up at about 500 percent. You can see my finger. I'm adding air. I'm drying it off with the the blast of air. I have a double action airbrush. Eyes. There's a point of no return now. Hitting those up. And just paint, paint, paint. Air, air, air. Dry, dry, dry. Now I'm grabbing the white again, and I've missed a cable, but I'm going back to reestablish 
uh, some under white on everything, most of everything that I've done. There are some cables I'm going to leave alone, but I'm doing this not for the black light effect per se, but when uh, yellow and green under black light look very similar, I'm doing this step for when it sits on a shelf in a regular light. I'm adding an extra step of white so that I can add an extra transition color inside to give it more visual interest. So we're just going to make some cables, the eyes, and some at ports brighter now so that I can go in and cut it with yellow to make it super interesting. And here's the yellow. Air, 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 a little bit of paint, adding it in and just hitting some extra ports, cables to make it look bright. Now you can see with all the extra green parts in there, this is going to have a lot of movement, cool colors going up warm up and down along with the warm colors. It's going to look great. I've established white on the blue part again, and I'm using a, there she is. And I'm using a customized blue that I've had a mix. I've never found a really good neon blue. Some people tell me overseas, a couple of overseas companies make one, but I just, I've never felt the hassle with it. This seems to work well enough. And here she is all assembled, front, back, black light, back. And after a little bit of checking, I didn't care for the ports on the side. So I'm going to just make it a little more over exaggerated and with proprietary glove mask and off camera view and upside down, we're going to get that shot in there, make it look its best. Thanks. And uh, yeah, and then we're gonna check it out with the crown flanges to make sure that that light effect now lines up with the inside portion of it. Matching it up, stick it in. I magnetize those so that they, they stay in pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the way that came out. So blast it off camera and put it on, check it out, blast the other one off camera. And it's all on the inside so that you have an interaction with the parts. Check it out with the black light, I have a flashlight that I can do, and then turn off the lights. Check it out to see how I like it there. And it looks pretty good. There's two touch-ups, one for each side to do. We're just going to flick on the lights, take off each part, give it a quick pss, pss, and call it done. Now that it's done, we're just going to click it into place, take a little image of it as it sits now, and then I'm going to take it upstairs, do a couple glaze washes, and then take some stills of it. Hey, thank you for joining me today. I hope you were able to walk away with some tools on glazing either just flat panels, special effects. If you like the to the, this process and, and you like some of the toys you see here, I do have an Instagram feed that you can follow, check out what's going on there, see what other projects are have been done in the past. and works in progress for the future. I also have a web store that has a lot of custom toys on there, some resin kits as well that are painted in all one of a kind fashion. And to end the video, I'm gonna share, have, show a slideshow of some black light toys, regular and under the, the black light. Thanks a bunch for joining me today.